my name's Mark, Mark Taylor. I'm a glass blower and uh, I've been blowing glass for about 25 years now. And uh, we concentrate on reproducing historical glass, uh, ranging from Roman glass through to medieval, post med, and 18th century glass. Hello, I'm David Hill. I'm an artist. I work with Mark. I work on recreating some of the mould blown glass that's been made, particularly in the Roman period. You can't go and buy Roman glass off the shelf, so you have to make it. So we've got, uh, in, in our potions room, we have uh, a small store of, of raw materials which will make a, a, a typical Roman glass, a typical ancient glass, a soda lime glass. And so we can, we can make the, uh, the glass that we want. There are a lot of original Roman glasses which have been analysed scientifically and, whose, and the compositions of which have been published so we can work directly from them. A form of glass blowing seems to have been discovered around about 50 or 60 BC but it's not glass blowing as we tend to think of it nowadays. Proper glass blowing with a tube or a blowing iron gathering hot glass from a pot and inflating it doesn't seem to be around until somewhere in the first quarter of the first century AD. So somewhere between the years AD 1 and 25. We have very good evidence that the Romans, Roman glass makers, used moulds that were made of fired ceramic. They used fired ceramic moulds for making parts for dolls, vessels in pottery, all kinds of things like that. So pottery is, is the most likely substance used to create their moulds. Unfortunately, not one has survived from the ancient world for blowing this kind of vessel, but there's enough evidence on, to be seen on the glasses themselves that we can be pretty certain that they're using ceramic moulds. We're using a bronze mould because they're much more reliable. You get a very consistent copy of the vessel each time and they're virtually indestructible. The Roman moulds, although if looked after, they will last for hundreds and hundreds of copies that can be blown from them, but unfortunately they are very fragile. They only have the strength of a good flower pot, so if they're dropped, that's the end of it process of making glass, uh, in this particular case for uh, making circus beakers, is to melt uh, crushed glass or cut it. Um, I do that by shoveling the uh, broken glass into one of the pots in the furnace. Uh, leave it for about 12 hours at about 1300 centigrade and the next day we have glass which is workable. When we prepare to blow the glass. First thing I do is to gather some glass from the furnace. Um, I take a gathering iron and uh, dip it into the molten glass and rotate. revolutions there's enough glass on the blowing line to remove it from the furnace and to uh, take it to the glass blowing chair or bench and prepare it for blowing. In this case by blocking it using a, a wooden block steeped in water to stop it from burning that will give the glass a uh, basic ball shape which I can then adjust. I have to introduce air into the glass. I blow down the, blow down the blowing iron uh, to create a small bubble in the glass and uh, after a few moments allow the glass to cool a little bit. I can then transport it over to the mould, uh, <coughs> dip it vertically into the mould which is open. I ask David to close the mould, uh, David will close the mould and I will blow hard for a, a, a few seconds and then I will ask David to open the mould and then I can extract the glass which has now become uh, well, it's just turned into the shape of a beaker. Um, I then take it back to the chair and um, check that it's uh, check that the base is flat, and then I can uh, remove it from the blowing iron by taking it over to the cracking off box, which is next to the leer, and um, a little bit of water dropped onto the neck of the of the bubble uh, will uh, create a crack starter, and then a sharp tap will uh, crack the glass away from the blowing iron which I then hand to David and then I can uh, pick the glass up using a, a wooden stick and put it into the into the lear uh, onto the shelf in there and then close the lear door and that's, that's it.
The Lear will uh, keep the glass hot until the end of the working day. Um, <clears throat> I can then push a button and uh, the glass will cool down slowly and evenly uh, overnight and it will be ready for handling uh, the next day. We've spent quite a lot of the money that we've made in the business on research, putting it back into working out what the Romans did and also what the Egyptians did with their core form glass and, and things like that. So it's quite a bit of experimental work, particularly with moulds, working out various techniques and blowing styles that the, uh, the ancient and early glass makers and glass blowers would have used. And recently, over the last few years, uh, we have been working with 18th century glass, um, again from uh, the point of view of trying to work out how the 18th century glass blowers uh, actually made some of their glass, for instance, opaque twists and colour twists, and actually trying to work out how the patterns were created. Um, it's not been passed down these days because it's, it's well, I guess it's gone out of fashion and there's been, there are several generations of, of glass makers of, um, have, uh, have occurred since the 18th century. And in doing so, we're keeping a craft alive in a very real sense because uh, there are so few glass blowers left. There are very few who are particularly interested in historical techniques or, or that kind of area.